Hall of Fame broadcaster Marty Brenneman here, and he's the best storyteller in the game, and it's time to sit back, relax, and have some laughs. Welcome to the mayor's office, and here's your host, Sean Casey. Bam, we're back at it, Chinch. We are. Hall of Fame type edition of Fun Bag Friday today. Yeah. Yes, yes, a Hall of Fame edition. This is going to be a good one. We're going grassroots and Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. We all love baseball. We all love where it came from. And our two guests today, man, this is going to be a lot of fun. First off, one of our buddies that we've known for years and years, and if you're you're involved in in baseball and you love the history of the game, man, this guy, Jeff Idelson, he's been president. President of uh, of the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum from 2008 to 2019. He's been involved with them since 1994, obviously, and always come over to the network to announce, you know, the winners, which is really cool. Um, Jean Fruth, too, is with us. She wrote a book called Grassroots Baseball, Where Legends Begin. And her and Jeff have joined forces... Right, which is if you're going to so join cool. forces, Jeff Idelson's a good person to join forces <laughs> with from grassroots, and 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 they uh they have a wonderful, wonderful project. Um, you know what? They have a mission statement here, but you know, instead of me reading their mission, let's bring them in so they can tell us what the mission's in. So, Gene and Gene and Jeff, thanks for joining us. Well, thanks. So great to be here. Yeah. So can you, <laughs> hey, t- talk to us a little bit about, you know, uh, about your partnership. Uh, you know, Gene, I know you did this, um, this book and boy, the, the book is so wonderful. The, the, um, this, the, the, the photography is phenomenal. First off, it really captures the essence of what baseball is around the country, you know, everywhere in Oklahoma, Texas, Illinois, all the different places, which is which is so wonderful. And obviously with you, Jeff, you know, the history that you have of the game and you being able to, and and if anybody's ever been to Cooperstown, that's not like a big city. You know, that's like, you talk about grassroots. That's, that's a grassroots town. So can you talk about, you know, what are you guys doing? What are you looking to promote? And, and, and what's going on with this whole project you have going? We, when uh, Jeff and I connected, I was the traveling uh, traveling photographer for the Baseball Hall of Fame. And my first book, Grassroots Baseball, Where Legends Begin, was released in 2019. And that was the amateur game around the world with legends like Hank Aaron um, uh, and many legends telling stories. Johnny Bench uh, of their early years playing baseball um, in regions inside the U.S. and outside the U.S. Ichiro Suzuki, Pudge Rodriguez. And the list goes on and on. And uh, when that was released, we decided, well, I called Jeff and he was still president of the Baseball Hall of Fame and said, I'd love to grow grassroots baseball into a not for profit and give back. You know, I'm at a point in my life where I want to give back and surround my work with purpose. And Jeff said, well, I've been at the Hall of Fame for 26 years. I'd love to just go to a beach for a little while. I'll join you. (laughs) I need some time off. And I said, great. Well, what do you think about starting on Route 66 and, um, you know, having this Americana and doing clinics with kids and having Hall of Famers join us? He said, yeah, I'm in, but there's that beach I want to go to. (laughs) And, And then what happened, Jeff? I don't know. All of a sudden uh, I'm sitting there and I get a call like two days later and she's like, uh, so I've got an RV lined up with sponsors. Are you ready? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still hey, looking for a, I'm still looking for a beach in North Texas. Sean. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. Like, hey, listen, I'm heading to the beach, but yeah, again, pick me up in that RV and we'll go, we'll go around and look at some uh, amateur baseball for a while. <laughs> It's so great. You guys were just recently um, in Pittsburgh, right? And, and uh, you know, what were you guys doing here at Chatham University? Yeah, that's our new project. But Jeff said, OK, well, when Route 66 is done, grassroots baseball Route 66, what about the beach then? And I said, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but wait, we have this new project we have to do. <laughs> it's called Grassroots Baseball Women. And we got to tell the story now of women in the game, around the game, past, present, future. So as soon as we're done with that project. <laughs> I think you got to build a pool, Jeff, or something. <laughs> trying to convince me that Three Rivers is a beach. I'm like, they're rivers, you're not a beach. <laughs> well, there was water. Yeah. yeah, you're like the Monongahela River doesn't really, you can't really have a margarita on the Monongahela River, okay? It's more like uh, you might be able to find a tire in there in the, in the, in the, in the Ohio Monongahela if you go down there. It's so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> It was Gosh. cool in Pittsburgh. This uh, woman pitcher at Chatham University, a senior, it was a doubleheader. She started the second game, woman playing on an all man's team. She yeah, Kellyanne Jenkins. Kellyanne Jenkins. Yeah, she yes. throws a knuckleball. Yes. 
Wow. Was, and she got the win. It was a fabulous day. We wow. didn't make it to a beach, but what a great day. That's really cool. And, and, and st you know, staying on that theme right there, because there are so many women, you know, now, you know, starting to kind of filter into into Major League Baseball, you know, on the coaching staff with the Giants in the minor leagues as a manager. I think it's Rachel uh, Balkovic. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's the manager, I think, in a, the A-ball team for the Yankees. And, you know, Jeff, for you, man, you know, being such a historian of the game. Do you, are, do you think we will see a, a, a woman, you know, um, well, obviously we saw the first base coach for the Giants too, um, the first woman ever in a big league game. Do you think that we will see a woman one day on the field as a player in the big leagues? I, I don't think there's anything women can't do, Sean. Uh, I really don't. And Rich too. I mean, I really don't. And as you see it, you see the progression coming and you see what we see in the United States is it's starting to develop. You have baseball for all, which now has a, uh, national tournaments and, and sponsoring teams all around the country for younger girls. But there's also a much more established uh, pattern of girls and women in the game around the globe. And uh, whether it's in Australia, in Asia, India, the game is alive and well for women. And I just think it's a matter of time before you see a woman taking the field uh, in a major league game. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, I think I think also too that girl Kellyanne Jenkins, who's at Chatham University, talk about, you know, I think that the pitching, you know, too, like a nasty knuckleball, it doesn't matter who's throwing that nasty knuckleball. If it's coming in, you know, it doesn't have to have, you know, 98 miles an hour up, but if it can dance and you can throw it consistently, you know, that that might be the way you might see a, a woman get into the big leagues is that, you know, being able to throw a knuckleball. Yeah, I mean, she threw a knuckle, knuckle curve and fastball. Uh, she's very talented, and uh, I mean, and she's got big aspirations. She played softball most of her life, and now she's committed to baseball. Uh, she's going to go out for the U.S. national team, and you know, there's there is no ceiling for a young lady like Kellyanne Jenkins. Yeah, Gene, for you, um, traveling the globe and 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 uh, putting together this book, this book, Grassroots Baseball. You know, what were what were some of the surprising things, or what were some of the the amazing things that you really like? Uh, you know, took from from taking the pictures that you did and putting together this book. You know, just traveling along Route sixty six. I went to so many places that I probably wouldn't have. You know. I, I had no plans to go to Baxter, Baxter Spring, Kansas, you know, and you go <laughs> to all these small towns yeah. and baseball is alive and well. And it, it's just inspiring for me. My first book, Traveling Around the World, you know, I show that baseball is played the same everywhere, but it looks different in different places. And that's what's interesting. The culture, what surrounds the game. It may look, be played the same, but it certainly looks different. And that's also the same along Route 66. You start in Chicago and telling the story of urban cities and what baseball looks like that now. And then you're in these small rural towns, places like Commerce, Oklahoma, just being there, you know, and of course we knew Mickey Mantles from Commerce, Oklahoma, it goes right through Route 66, but then you get there and you get this feeling when you're, his house is still intact, the barn is still there. I invited the high school Commerce baseball team to come over to the house and barn and pose for me because that's where Mickey Mantle played, uh, wow. played high school baseball. And that's where he is. his dad and his grandpa taught him how to be a switch hitter mm -hmm. while he was against the barn. And one would pitch to him on one side and the other would pitch on the other side. And it's just these great stories. And the high school team, you know, they have hope because they know that legend came out of this tiny little town, Commerce, Oklahoma. And so they were happy to pay tribute to him and pose them at the house and the barn. And, and it's just stories like that that weave all the way through. There's how many major leaguers, Jeff, we had baseball reference did this cool um, uh, graph chart for us. And it's over 2000 major league baseball players uh, were born along Route 66. That, that what? What? What's the number, Jeff? It's like 2000. Yeah, so it, it's, a, it's over 2000. And you think about, you know, guys like Bench, guys like Mantle that came out of these towns of like five, six, seven hundred kids. And they get discovered. Uh, Max Scherzer grew up in Springfield, Illinois. I mean, right on Route 66. Wow. You know, Willie, Willie Stargell in rural Oklahoma. Uh, so Tony Gwynn, Ricky Henderson. You know, there's a lot of a lot of talent grew up along the mother road. Wow. Wow. That's wow. amazing. I got one you know, quick one, if you don't go, mind. Go ahead, Chinch, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Jeff, I'll start with you, and you guys both can answer. Did you did you find, you know, you're, you're meeting with all these people, and, and, and they're kind of express themselves. Did you find, is there room for an improvement? Are there things that... You know, when you go to these towns, they go, you know, we really could use this or that. Um, 
that that's been kind of consistent across the board or, or, or has it been a little more straight edge? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think what we learn, Rich, is that uh, what we all know, which is the travel ball is, is big and it's great. But there are many, many people that don't have that opportunity, don't have the needs. And that's part of grassroots baseball mission. Grassroots baseball's mission is to, you know, try to grow the game in, in, in smaller places uh, and those who are less fortunate. So, yeah, we learned that as we traveled the country and we did a number of clinics with Hall of Famers like uh, like Johnny Goose Gossage, Trevor Hoffman, uh, Ozzy Smith, Jim Tomey. Uh, and Billy Hatcher, uh, former Red like you, Sean. And what we learned is when we went into these communities is that they, we were really, really welcome there. And for a lot of these kids, they had never even experienced playing baseball. And, we, and you know, Gene and I were able to put together some great sponsorship and we were able to give kids broken in new Rawlings gloves and balls. And for these kids, they, they started giving the gloves back when they're leaving. It's like you get to keep this. And they had no sense <laughs> of that. So, wow. you know. It, it, it is meaningful, and I think we made a bit of an impact, and there's a lot a lot more we could be doing. Wow. Oh, I, geez. I think that's so wonderful because I, I, I can't st- – I, you know, I can't stand sometimes people like, hey, the game of baseball is past, you know, it's America's pastime, but the kids nowadays, they they can't, you know, the, the attention span is too little and, you know, it, it's more NBA, NFL. And I, I just think, man, this is the greatest game in the world. You know, it truly is America's pastime. I know I love baseball because I love going to games with my dad. You know, I love I love sitting down and, you know, breaking down the games within the game, man. Look at that guy's lead or watch, watch the pitcher, you know, uh, watch the pitcher and the batter matchup. Watch the catcher and the how where he sets up and you know watch this guy run the bases man look at look at the guys play the outfield there's so many great things about the game of baseball and i think man i, I love the projects because uh because uh, uh, something like this that passes on to people instruction inspiration equipment to these kids to understand you're playing the greatest game in the world this truly is america's pastime and that is such a wonderful sport and i think anytime we can go to the smaller smaller towns go across Cross country through on route 66 find out the history of the game nothing better than the history of baseball i think anything to promote this wonderful game because it just hits me in the heart when i hear oh yeah these kids are you know no, nobody's gonna love baseball the way they used to i think that's not true and i think baseball is as is as great as it's ever been i completely agree and and, and when you see these strong towns you see the passion for baseball in very young kids i think i'll go back to baxter springs wasn't wasn't baxter springs jeff where there was that one young player and he could mimic every of all his heroes stances he took <laughs> me through all of them and you know he could he could stand exactly and it was just hilarious i shot him all the way through he wanted to show me every single stance that he knew of the players that were his heroes and he could do them all it was really it was very cool but that's a young kid who's just like you paying attention to the game and it does get passed down from generations that's what's so great it's connecting generations everybody has their baseball story when we would go through route 66 Everybody had their story to tell of their dad, their mom, their mom taking them to to the ice cream shop after their little league game and all of these memories connecting generations, grandpas. And it's just it what makes our sport more special, I think, than, you know, I don't know, I'm biased, but anything out there um, with connect with how much it connects generations and goes through the generations. Yeah. I I look back, you know, I I would say too, like, you know, for you, Jeff, I know that you've, you know, obviously been the president of of Cooperstown and, you know, the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, which is, I don't know, I think that's a pretty cool gig you had. That's in, in my, in my opinion. You know, when you look when you look back at your time there, guys, we, as Gene talks about the history of the game and and all these kids, and because we were all kids at one point. Now, I played twelve years in the big leagues, but you know, I have stuff in, in pictures behind me when I was twelve and being with my dad, my grandmother in the Cape when I played in the Cape Cod League, all the uh, my at the Jersey Shore playing wiffle ball, like so many winning the winning the high school championship, like so much of of my love for the game is as a kid, and then I was fortunate enough to play till I was thirty four. I mean, there was times I was thinking, you know, how the hell did I get here? I can't believe I'm still playing the game that I love since I've been like six, seven years old. For you, you got to see it firsthand at Cooperstown. For the guys, like for me, it was it was an unbelievable dream to play 
in uh, in Major League Baseball, 12 years, play at three All-Star games, play in the World Series. Cooperstown was never, you know, I was, you know, I, I, I played in the, I got in the Reds Hall of Fame, which is my Cooperstown. But for the one percenters of guys that have played in the big leagues, they get a chance to get inducted into Cooperstown and you get a chance to induct them. Can you can you first off take us through what the, what has that experience been like for you as a baseball fan, as you are? And what was your most memorable induction that you did? Well, that's great. That's a lot of good, a lot of questions there and good ones, Sean. Uh, you know, I'm the ultimate baseball fan, like all of us on this podcast. We all grew up loving the game. So when I got to Cooperstown, for me, it was like, what am I doing in this chair? Why am I here? And how did I get this job? How can I share this with many people as possible? And I just thought, I'm so lucky. I have this inside ability to get to people. I got to share this with as many people as I can. So I love being at the Hall of Fame. Uh, I love the history of the game. I've developed some incredible relationships. I also love being at the team level with the Red Sox and Yankees before I went to Cooperstown. Um, many, many memorable moments uh, in, in, in my time in Cooperstown. Probably the inductions to stand out would be 2008, uh, which was my first year as president. And I got to induct Goose Gossage, who I worked with at the Yankees. So that was the opportunity to go back and you know, induct a guy I had worked with or be part of that ceremony, Jim Rice, Tom, uh, Jim Rice and Wade Boggs. I worked with in Boston, Tom Seaver. Uh, so some of the, you know, some of those inductions to me were mo- really, really important. And let's not, let's not sell short the career you had, Mr. Casey. I mean, you had a pretty <laughs> phenomenal career and you have real estate in Cooperstown, which you know, because you got the first hit in not one, but two major league ballparks, including your hometown ballpark, which is just outrageous. That must have been an incredible feeling. Great. I mean, oh, I appreciate it, bro. Like, like one of the coolest things. Oh, my God. One of the coolest things for me was when I got the first hit at Miller Park. And then three days later, I had, I had circled on my calendar. Oh, my God. Like, all the years going to Three River Stadium with my dad and my friends and, like, all the, you know, all the things rooting for the guys that I love, the Stargels and the, you know, Bonds and Van Slyke and Jim Leland and all these guys. And I remember thinking, oh, man, if I could get the first hit – at PNC Park, it would be unbelievable. And that day, Jeff, like I always hit third, and that day I was hitting fourth. I'm like, why am I hitting fourth? I'm like, what if I don't get up? Like if it goes one, two, three inning, I don't get up. I'm like freaking out. I'm like so freaking out. So first two guys get out, you know, coming up, and I'm like, oh my God, Barry Lark and Michael Tucker get out. Demetri Young comes up, he's hitting third, and I'm on deck, and I'm just like, please, Lord, just get me up. Like find a way, find a way. Um, Todd Ritchie, the pitcher for the Pirates, gets um, Dimitri Young 0-2. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not going to get up. He's going to punch out Dimitri. Pirates are going to hit. There's Someone's going to get the first hit. Sure enough, Todd Ritchie tries to come in to Dimitri Young and ends up throwing a cutter that sails in and hits him in the ribs. So Dimitri gets hit by a pitch. And I'm like, oh, sure my gosh. Ste- sure he didn't step into it? I, 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 they are I good said, friends. Dimitri, They're good friends. I said, Dimitri, Dimitri, do everything you can to get on base without getting a hit. Do everything you can to get on base. So, so he gets on base at first, and I, I remember thinking to myself, all right, at least I got a shot. I'm, I'm either going to get it done or I'm not, but I got a shot. And I think it was a 1-1 cutter that didn't cut, and I end up hitting the ball leaves my bat. And it, and it, and you know, as a, as a hitter, when you hit one, it's going out of the park. I was, I hit it. It left my bat. I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, that's going to be, not only is that going to be the first hit at PNC park, it's going to be the first home run too. So, Oh my God. I just remember rounding the bases and I had left 70 tickets for that, for that day. You know, back in this, back in the day where you could leave as many tickets, 70 tickets. I'm rounding the bases. I touch home, whatever. And I remember after the game, um, you guys had come and said, we want your bat because it's the, you're the first player in Major League Baseball history to get the first hit at two, at two ballparks at Miller Park and, and, and PNC. And when I came, when my sons came to play those Cooperstown games and when they were 12 and uh, 13 or whatever, um, you – we're, we're so cool because you guys brought the bat out and I was able to like tell my kids, Hey, your dad was actually a good player. I know you think he stinks and he's, he's a, he's a, just a dad, but I was like, and, and so it, what a cool, awesome thing you guys have at Coop or had at Cooperstown with down below with the white gloves. And so thank you so much for bringing that up. That's just such a cool memory of mine, man. It was just awesome. Really awesome. Oh. 
that's a, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's moments like that that happen and your generosity that allows the Hall of Fame to tell those stories. So thank you, Sean. Yeah, no, really, really, really cool. Really, really cool. Um, I got a question for you, though, Jeff. One thing that because I know that you used to bring people around and, and, and you brought my family and I, too, but kind of give the tour and the history of baseball. And I think this is so cool with the grassroots book. That's the, you know, the history of the baseball. I think so many kids a lot of us play the game and we still don't know some of the details of, Hey, why is this? Why is that? One of the coolest things that I did with you uh, on the tour of, of the, of, uh, of Cooperstown was when you really going into the history of the game of back in the 1800s, when it was first, you know, being put together, the rules and everything. Could, could you tell our, our listeners why they call clubhouses clubhouses in the big leagues? Oh boy. Do you, do you, rem- uh, do you remember that? Answer- I don't know the answer to that. Okay, well, I'm going to give you the answer because because you, you, when, when I w- wow. did a tour with all you guys, this is what you said, and I think and tell me you'll remember. Tell me if I think this is right for all the listeners. This is really cool. Back in the day, baseball was such a big deal in our in our country, and it was, truly was America's pastime. So when it was first coming about. It was like golf. The, the golf courses you have now used to be baseball clubs. So you'd go and you'd have baseball clubs. You're like, okay, yes. you come to the, the Upper St. Clair Baseball Club. You go to yep. the, you know, and so there was different clubs in every town. And and so before the, you know, when, it, when, and when the Cincinnati, when the, when the Cincinnati Red Stockings were the first team ever, what they would do was they would go to every club that one of the, the owner would go to every club and get the best player. So it'd be my, my town's club. They'd be like, Hey, I want your best player, your best player. And then all of a sudden they would pay those guys. So it was no longer amateur. It was okay. You're going to come play with the Cincinnati Red Stockings. We're going to go play the local clubs and we're going to kick their butts and then all of a sudden it started to say, oh, you want to do that? Well, I'm going to go do that too. And that's how baseball originally started was these baseball clubs that were just local places where you would go play baseball just like you would play golf. That's how the big leagues originally started. And that's why in the big leagues, they're not called locker rooms. They're called clubhouses because they used to be baseball clubs. I just thought that was cool. And I learned wow, that Sean. on that tour. It's true. Yeah. Now you, you, you've refreshed my memory after the cobwebs of the last three <laughs> yeah. years. But, uh, but uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. And the club and, and the Hall of Fame has a ton of trophy balls because what would happen was there was no Hall of Fame back then. So your club beats another club. They'd uh, guilt, you know, they guild the thing in gold and then write the score on it and would sit in your club. And so we've got some cool stuff in Cooperstown from the Troy Haymakers and the New York Gothams and some of those old clubs that you mentioned. Oh, that's so cool. That is, that is so cool. That is so cool. Um, so where can, where can our listeners, um, find you guys? You know, I know this book is absolutely phenomenal. It's grassroots, grassroots baseball book. Um, that is, uh, that Gene has put together and you too, Jeff, and you guys are obviously your, your mission. I think your mission is, uh, you know, is, is providing inspiration, instruction, equipment to help ensure more children have the opportunity to learn, play, and enjoy the game. Grassroots baseball is a five and one C3 tax exempt organization. So you can do to donate to where can our listeners get to you guys? Where can our listeners donate to help you guys out? And how do we continue to spread the word? grassrootsbaseball.org Sean okay easy enough grassrootsbaseball.org great great Father's Day gift one real quick one if I could follow up Gene I know I'm about to ask you which of your kids you like the best but is there one image (laughs) there that you care about more or 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 have a special feeling for more than any of the other ones oh yeah that's oh that is a tough one how about this one how about this one the cover image the cover image, oh cool. yeah, that's oh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the sunrise images. The oh, cover, Im- cover image, cover image is unbelievable. Beautiful. The cover, beautiful. you know, of of three kids from Binger High School, where Johnny Bench went to high school, traveling along Route Route sixty six to their game in a nineteen sixty eight pickup truck, and the <laughs> senior in that truck, he gets the truck when he graduates, and then it gets passed to his sister. Wow. So I got the whole story of the truck and. Um, you know, and just that, you know, I love, you know, kids in the back of a pickup truck, you know, where else do you see that? And so, yeah, the, the cover image is special to me, of course, commerce, Oklahoma is special to me. And then, you know, Sean mentioned playing wiffle ball on the beaches in New Jersey. You know, we have, uh, route 66 ends in Santa Monica. And I did a great shoot with, there's all these kids playing wiffle ball, pickup ball, and people say, oh, pickup ball doesn't, 
doesn't exist. Well, it does. Kids still play wiffle ball, you know, on the beaches. Jeff yeah. doesn't because he doesn't get to go to a beach. Right. But, <laughs> uh, but you know, for those who make it to a beach, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get you a vacation, I, I, Jeff. I, I, I have this. This picture has a special place in my heart. You guys went to a Miracle League. Yeah. Yeah. In in Edmond, I started a Miracle League um, ten years ago. We have a Miracle League in my hometown, Miracle League of the South Hills. We have we serve over four hundred kids with special needs, and our mission statement is that every kid deserves a chance to play baseball. So, yeah, it's a wonderful. It's been a what? I mean, I always tell people, listen, there are so many ways that you can you know give back to baseball, and there's also you know I know, and sometimes life gets anxious, stressful here and there. I said, if you ever want to feel joy and gratitude and love for life come out to a miracle league game go find one in your area and find these kids that you know have special needs and the, but they're out there with their uniforms on their hats ready to go that's why it's the greatest game ever everyone can play it you know everyone can play it and it's just so freaking wonderful i want to go nuts but you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we had a, yeah, we had a miracle great league does make you feel that way i didn't know how i was going to feel it was the first time i shot miracle league and it was just like what Sean is saying, you get that feeling and the, yeah, the stress does go away. It's like, wow, yeah. how cool is this? I, you're yeah. exactly right. I remember that feeling Shoot, yeah. that, it was multiple games. I started early in the day and we went all the way to sunset and it was, it was such a beautiful day. That's great. That's great. Well, grassroots.org for everyone out there. Gene, and and this book is unbelievable. Jeff, thanks for being a part of it and using your using your platform, man, to help help um, you know spread this word and uh, just get it out to everybody. What a wonderful game that we have. Everyone deserves a chance to play it. And uh, your your organization and, and, and your cause and what you guys are doing, this is so wonderful. But we just really appreciate you guys being with us today. And Chinch and I will continue to sp spread your message uh, through some of our shows. Well, we couldn't be more grateful to either, to both of you guys. So thank you, Sean and Cinch. We're really, really appreciative. Awesome. You got it. Definitely you got the it. Okay. most fun podcast ever. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you, Gene. Thank you, Jeff. We'll talk to you guys soon. Good luck to you guys. Thank right. you so Thanks, much. guys. Oh, man, Chinch, how great was that? So great. And you know you know what's especially great is like being able to work in baseball. Like we've been, I've been lucky to, to have done like the fraternity sorority slash situations like as soon as they pop up it's like seeing my old friends again and holy cow this you got to get this book this is not like cheap uh, publicity here how great yeah. is this book sean seriously it's unbelievable it's unbelievable like, yeah if you go through it this grassroots space if you're a true baseball fan yeah. you got to get this book and and and, the, and all the money goes to great proceeds to support baseball you know across our yeah. country but you know gene said it best you know talking about mickey mantle and being from oklahoma well johnny bench was on our show i think what was it ele episode 11 yeah if you haven't you know if you're new to our show go back to episode 11 you can find it i think it's right around there johnny bench talks about being from oklahoma mm. loving mickey Mantle right. asking his dad dad I had no idea that you know that you could be from you know uh, one of these states and, and play in the big leagues oh yeah you can son right. and you know so it's just really cool the history of this game is phenomenal and having Jeff Idelson you know uh, on mm -hmm. this show too with all the history he's had at Cooperstown yeah. really cool and uh, you know just excited so if you go to grassroots.org you can get the book support the cause and keep growing the greatest game in the world yeah. baseball Amen. and 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 keep supporting us so pretty cool chinch yeah, love buddy. it buddy great that was a great great Friday show awesome. and uh, just a lot of fun having them on and promoting promoting awesome. the greatest game in the world for sure all right brother all right, all right man Cheers, brother. I will see you next week. Yes, sir. Okay, bro.